Okay, let's have a quick chat about uh, Supplement A it's in addition to the examples already worked out. First off um, is the break-even. Of course, this is the how do you get a break-even number for a single process or product. Um, cost and revenue, wherever they cross, that's your break-even quantity. Uh, see the other video for a more worked out example of that. Then we have the comparison between two processes, in this case buying or making a product. It's example A3. Again, there's another video on that, uh, so see that one for uh, some more details on these formulas and how to use them. Next now in Supplement A, which is all about decisions, we're going to talk about the preference matrix. And the preference matrix is a way to score something uh, and give those scores some meaning. So there's a, only a couple of key things you need to know uh, to make sure that uh, you do this correctly. Uh, I'm going to refer to the chart there now uh, talking about this. First is the score B or B. Uh, it's important for every criteria that's there that the score be evaluated out of the same set. So you can either have your score out of 10, 100, 20, one doesn't really matter as long as they're all scored the same so you know a lot of times the best is 10 the worst is 1 and uh, every criteria gets a score from 1 to 10 and then we have the weight and uh, the simple way to do weight so that it all works out is just have all the weights add up to 100 that's just the easiest way to do it not that you can't use other more complex schemes but that's the easiest way um, you multiply the weights by the scores you gave and you get a weighted score, add it all up. Um, this by the way is out of example A4 in the book. So the really important thing here to take away is that you don't want to just do this on one process. This is something that it's, it's all about making decisions. So the book gives us a single example but you're going to evaluate it on two or three. Um, I've used a preference matrix to evaluate tender submissions for public tender and um, I think our scores were 1 to 100 and then uh, and then the weights we had so many criteria actually I think we ended up with 90 something criteria that had to be scored for each tender and uh, we did not use a sum of 100 um, but we did have weights so that uh, in this case you can see that uh, the investment, or sorry, the market potential is three times the investment requirements. So the weight is it's three times as important. Um, the market potential is six times as important as the project risk. It's really a way to get comparison. So as long as two things that are equally valued, in this case the unit profit margin and the operations compatibility, um, are the same, uh, and the weights are reflecting that ratio or that comparison of criteria. Like I said, I had to use this before and uh, it, was, it was quite complex and quite involved to evaluate these public tenders. Okay folks, just a couple more slides to do now. Um, first off is decision theory. Um, I'm not going to read all these things out. Uh, I read the book, it explains all of these in a little bit more detail. Um, if you have any questions, please post in the forums or uh, drop me a note if you want anything answered. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about a little bit was decision uncertainty, which <clears throat> I guess, uh, so there are four ways we can calculate an optimal solution with decision, decision uncertainty. First one is maxi-min, and essentially what we're going to do is, is do a calculation and figure out what's the best of the worst case scenario. So if the worst was to happen for our scenarios, then what would be the best option we could pick? Next we have maxi max, which is the best of the best case. So we would use some probabilities, calculate our best options, and pick the best case scenario solution. Uh, I'll skip over Laplace for a second, and then I'll talk about mini max regret. So what we're talking about here is minimizing the opportunity cost. So minimizing the regret. <clears throat> and what that involves is when you look at a number of solutions, 
um, if you take one solution, uh, that means that there's another one that you can't take. So if you take the difference in the two solutions, um, then that's going to be your regret. So you want to pick the minimal, uh, the minimal regret. Uh, okay, so decision trees. Um, have a look at example A8. Um, uh, it's a good decision tree. Uh, it's a way to take some of the calculations that you have have done from all of the decision mechanisms and uh, graphically look at them and work back until a decision is actually made showing uh, giving a good example or proving why the decision that's chosen is the best decision and what rules were used to make that decision um, slides 37 to 44 in supplement a and the other slide deck uh, show the steps taken to make the decision tree to fill it out and make the decision and that's an example A8 again on page 38